a hubbub in the tabletop role-playing game community for the past couple days now with the announcement of a brand new TSR and some questionable words from Ernie Gygax, the son of the late Gary Gygax, has left the entire LGBTQ community, as well as a lot of women in gaming, feeling alienated and lost. But who even are TSR, and, and why does this matter? Let me take you to a faraway time called 1973. Gary Gygax and Don Kay come together to form a company called TSR in order to publish a brand new game they're working on called Dungeons and Dragons. Business was booming in 1975, and in doing so, they created TSR Hobbies, which was a separate company designed to market games such as Dungeons and Dragons. They also released the famous Dungeons and Dragons Basic Kit and Advanced Dungeons and Dragons. And even Gen Con, one of the largest tabletop role-playing games and board game conventions in the world. Now, I do want to mention that by 1983, there were now five TSRs under one umbrella, and I can't seem to figure out which one does what or who does what. So let's just assume they're all one giant conglomerate from this point forward. Gygax leaves to go to Hollywood to create TSR Entertainment, and in doing so markets more Dungeons & Dragons for the mass audience, as well as publishing settings such as Dragonlance and Oriental Adventures. Yikes. Gygax returns home, and in doing so realizes there are some legal troubles going on, with shareholders trying to sell the company. At the end of all of this, TSR is sold to Lorraine Williams. Over the course of the next decade or so, TSR would go on to create some of the largest and most fantastic tabletop role-playing games to ever hit the kitchen table. But as most things do, TSR fell into financial troubles due to some poor sales in new games, and eventually were sold to Wizards of the Coast in 1997. Fast forward to 2011, a dude named Jason Elliott discovered the TSR trademark had lapsed in 2004 and snatched it up. He wanted to launch his new company with some prior collaborators for TSR, such as Luke and Ernie Gygax, the sons of the late Gary Gygax. Fast forward again to 2016. Gary Gygax's widow, Gail, files a trademark dispute against TSR and Gary's two sons. This company is still in operation and published a game in 2017 called Top Secret New World Order. And now we time skip to the present day. A press release from TSR.Games announced that TSR is back with the old logo and the old location from the original office of TSR. And it's all run by Ernie Gygax as the executive vice president. And so today, in the year of our Lord, 2021, there are now two TSRs. TSRgames.com and TSR.games. So why does this matter? Well, it didn't really matter until Ernie went on a podcast and said some questionable words. In this interview, Ernie would go on to explain the history of TSR, the reason why they formed the new company, and their first new project called Giant Lands. And then he said the bad stuff. Now I want to pause to mention that some of the things you're going to hear are probably not the worst things you've ever heard before. However, there is a very large issue with the old guard of tabletop role-playing games with a large track history of being bigots, racist, and generally not accepting of the LGBTQ community. They can apparently think of these rich fantasy worlds, but two dudes kissing is way too much for them. This is not, and has not, and will never be the tabletop role-playing community that I love and adore. It is a warm, wonderful, kind, and accepting place, and all are welcome in the tabletop role-playing community. And there is no excuse for this kind of behavior. So when asked about Wizards of the Coast, who are the current owners of the D&D brand, Ernie replies... They just took it all corporate raiders do, the treasures, and then try to make them their own. American Indians did the same thing. They would wipe out another tribe many times, take the women and children, murder off everything else, and leave to make your tribe that much better room to grow. What? And when asked why a new TSR was needed, he said, TSR has been gone. There's a ton of artists and game designers and people that play, and recently they were dissed for being old-fashioned possibly anti-modern trends, and enforcing or even having concepts of gender identity, followed by a laugh. Funnily enough, shortly after this came out, the TSR Twitter account went on to announce that all are welcome at their tables and how they believe that Gary Gygax and his son Ernie were a product of their times. But Twitter quickly lashed back with some proof of Gary Gygax and other former TSR collaborators and their big fat mouths. Hi, this is Jeff during the edit. Um, this is for past Jeff but I completely glossed over a really important thing that happened on Twitter between the TSR account and the Giantlands account, as well as a trans woman named Meg the Sorceress. I'm just going to show these tweets here and just let you come to your own conclusion on 
this whole scenario, but these are real tweets, and you can find them on Twitter. They're all real. And TSR doing some really weird tweets. And here I sit, an avid lover of tabletop role-playing games and a part of this community, staring at this bizarre mess of situation, being glad that Wizards of the Coast is at least trying to distance themselves and distance D&D from its dark origins. Although, they really aren't doing a great job at their own side either, but that's a story for another time. In short, you are always welcome for tabletop role-playing games. You are loved, you are wanted, you are welcomed, and you are accepted. Regardless of your race, your religion, your pronouns, your creeds, your beliefs, and your sexual preference, you are welcome at these tables. I would just avoid TSR's tables. If you enjoyed what you heard today, or if you want to know more about video games, tabletop games, and all that kind of stuff, feel free to hit that subscribe button, or check out more videos that you see on your screen now.